Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about Wesley Snipes and Passenger 57. Now this is a film that marked his introduction to the action genre. A genre I thought he was very well suited for with his athletic build, martial arts skills, and commanding presence. So if you like Wesley Snipes and you want to help support the channel, please click that likes button. You know what's ironic by the way? Wesley Snipes has done quite a few roles showcasing his exceptional martial arts talent in several bigger studio productions, even more in straight to video films. But it doesn't seem like his name comes up in a discussion when talking about great martial arts film stars. And I think it has to do with the fact that he's such a great actor. He's multifaceted as far as being great at dramatic roles, comedic roles, and of course action. But in general, I think when somebody brings up his name, it just kind of conjures up the image. Oh yeah, Snipes, great actor. They don't necessarily think, oh, Wesley Snipes, great martial arts movie star. But that's typically the first thing someone would think about if you mention Jean-Claude Van Damme or Steven Seagal, for example. And both those men, as well as the late Brandon Lee, tried to transition out of those type of roles and wanted to be more considered like an actor for dramatic roles. So it's like they utilized those skills and talents to initially get into movies, at which point they wanted to transition into more acting and dramatic roles. Whereas Wesley Snipes kind of did the opposite. He was already established and considered a great actor, which even the review from LA Times for Passenger 57 points out, as good an actor as Wesley Snipes is, and it's hard to think of many better, he still isn't good enough to save Passenger 57. I read some critics though said that you're wasting your talent in a movie like that. What do you think? I don't think I'm ever wasting my talent. Uh, you know, you try to get the best script that you can get. Sometimes you fall short, but uh, under these circumstances, I think the film is pretty good. Now at the time, early 90s big action was big business, and coming off the 80s, I'd say the 90s really continued that hot streak to high quality entertaining action films that'll likely never be eclipsed. From an actor's perspective, who wouldn't want to play a badass? I'm happy to be, you know, knocking people upside the head and <laughs> kicking people out planes and stuff like that. Yeah. I like it. And in Wesley Snipes' case, he was pretty much already a real life badass. And I'm sure he didn't mind showing off his martial arts skills, which we haven't seen up to this point. We could have potentially though, as he did audition for the lead role of Bruce Leroy in 1985's Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. As far as his martial arts go, it's generally reported that Wesley Snipes began training at the age of 12 and has earned a 5th Dan Black Belt in Shotokan Karate and a 2nd Dan Black Belt in Hapkido. In an interview, Wesley Snipes has stated, I never really planned on making action films, it just kind of happened. I focus primarily on acting and developing characters. My love is still drama though. Even if I play a straight action guy, I want to give him some depth and substance. In Passenger 57, he plays John Cutter, an ex-US Secret Service agent who is haunted by the murder of his wife, which still haunts him as he blames himself for her death. He's a broken man who needs redemption, or at the very least, according to his friend Sly, played by Tom Sizemore. But you gotta stop blaming yourself. You gotta get off the sidelines, you gotta get back into this game. Interesting side note by the way, Tom Sizemore's character's name Sly was used by the screenwriter because Passenger 57 was originally going to be a vehicle for Sylvester Stallone. Denzel Washington and Eddie Murphy were also considered for the lead role at one time. Casting Wesley Snipes as John Cutter worked well though, as it gave him an opportunity to branch out into action with a fairly decent script overall. Though that was one of the things critics panned, they did however praise Wesley Snipes for his performance as well as the villain played by British actor Bruce Payne. Wesley Snipes and Bruce Payne thoroughly researched their roles. Snipes spent time in the mountains of California training with members of paramilitary units and army special forces. Payne studied with a high-ranking counterterrorism expert and did research on terrorists and their activities. Payne says, There are three kinds of terrorists. There are the criminals, there are those who do it for political cause, and then there are the crazies. Charles Rain falls into two of these categories, the criminal and the crazy. I mentioned before in a prior Wesley Snipes video, which I'll link in the description below, that Snipes has this commanding presence. And based on what his maternal grandmother Ruth Duke said while Passenger 57 was in production, during a behind the scenes feature from Entertainment Weekly she said, Snipes always had this pre-natural confidence, even as a child. When he was a year and a half old, she recalls laughing, he kicked the door down and yelled, open the damn door. He hasn't lost his touch. Every actor has their own strengths and weaknesses, which is sort of tied in with their own personality and traits. So characters like John Cutter that Snipes plays just come across as very natural for someone like him, and you can really sense the confidence and bravado. Tell me you're good at this. I'm the best. With that said though, what I like about Passenger 57 is that you feel the sense of danger and terror that someone even with John Cutter's background would have in the face of a hostage situation. The scene it played out very realistically when he's in the bathroom and does a good job of putting the audience there in the thick of things. Oh no, no. Not now. Contrast that with Steven Seagal in Under Siege, which came out the same year, when he's in the meat locker. 
While I like Under Siege, the audience doesn't get or feel the same sense of danger, as Seagull often comes across as too invincible. So even though Seagull is entertaining to watch, I feel Snipes and the filmmakers in Passenger 57 do a much better job at creating the tension which leads to a more excitement for the audience. And shortly after the bathroom scene, Snipes is involved in a hostage-to-hostage -hostage showdown between him and the main villain character, Charles Rain. The movie just moves at a really nice pace and helps keep you on the edge of your seat. You really want to see how this is played out while being worried for the Snipes' character in this, ah crap, situation he's thrust into. The story for Passenger 57 changed quite a bit by the time it was filmed. The script was initially penned by Stuart Raphill. It was written as an action film for a guy like Clint Eastwood about a man going to bury his son in Spain who sat next to an Iranian terrorist on a plane. The terrorists aboard end up hijacking the plane and taking the passengers to Iran. The main character would then escape, shoot a bunch of terrorists, and then ask the remaining, who are the people running this country? He finds out it's the mullahs, and then takes them prisoners and hold them hostage in exchange for American prisoners, then fights his way out of Iran. The head of Warner Brothers thought it was too political, so Raphil did a couple of rewrites. Raphil says what he wrote only remains in the first quarter of the film, and that he could not think of a title for the film, but noticed a bottle of ketchup and was inspired by the Heinz 57 logo, so-called movie Passenger 57. I defy you to come up with a better name. I got 50 right here in the cupboard. How about Bisquick? <laughs> Pimento? Gherkin? Sauce? Maxwell House? All right, all right. David Lowry and Dan Gordon also worked on the script for Passenger 57. David Lowry would also help pen the 1995 Wesley Snipes film Money Train, and Dan Gordon shares a story credit with Sylvester Sloan for Rambo Last Blood. As far as the director goes, that was Kevin Hooks, who primarily worked in television. I think in a way that kind of benefited Passenger 57 though, because in television you usually have less time to tell your story, and Passenger 57 with its runtime of 84 minutes moves at a really nice pace without feeling rushed. To mix things up, the action is not even totally confined to the plane, as there'd be an emergency pit stop and we get to see our hero help save the day at a fair, before reboarding the plane and finishing the job. The original draft of the screenplay set the action at night, however, it was changed to a daylight story to save money. A limited $15 million budget and disagreements over things like scheduling and camera angles made for some friction between Snipes and director Kevin Hooks, with Snipes saying, It can be a little rocky, both of us starting out in the new genre. The film was shot by a cinematographer, Mark Irwin, who filmed the Brandon Lee and Dolph Lundgren buddy cop movie Showdown in Little Tokyo the year prior, and just this year shot the Michael J. White's Welcome to Sudden Death. Make sure to check out my video comparing Van Damme's Sudden Death to the Michael J. White's Welcome to Sudden Death. I'll link it in the description below. So any good movie needs a good villain, and we certainly got that with Bruce Payne's portrayal of Charles Rain, notorious for his reign of terror. But whatever you do, don't call him insane. His lawyer found out the hard way. It is the nature of man to confuse genius with insanity. Oh, Charles, Rain, who's not insane? He is kind of insane, though. For example, he's got a history of undergoing plastic surgery in order to throw the FBI off of his trail, but plastic surgery where he doesn't go under the gas but prefers to remain conscious, and just happens to be very ruthless and cold. Has no friends. I have no friends. I loathe incompetence. Which generally would be fine as long as you don't kill someone over it. And jumps out of third story windows. Marcus Trower of Empire Magazine stated that Bruce Payne was a quote, brilliantly disconcerting madman with his flowing blonde Jesus locks, armor piercing stare, and casual sadism. He makes Hannibal Lecter look like a social worker. And like Sir Anthony Hopkins' serial killer, Part of the man's menace is in the apparent contradiction between his articulate, well-spoken English and his offhand brutality. While you're on the phone, I'll be killing another group of passengers. Let me know when I should stop. A reviewer for People Magazine stated that Bruce Payne steals the plane and the movie. He certainly has for the movie. In fact, I'd say Passenger 57 is easily one of the best acted action movies out there. Now, a lot of people may not necessarily watch an action movie for the acting, but it does go a long way, especially if you've watched enough straight-to-video fare. You really start to miss good quality acting. Other notable co-stars include Tom Sizemore, who was especially good in the 90s in movies such as Heat, True Romance, and Sighting Private Ryan, for example. In Passenger 57, I mentioned he played a character named Sly after Sylvester Sloan. Sly Del Vecchio. I don't know how to spell his name. D-E-L Vecchio. He had a really good chemistry with Wesley Snipes. They were very natural together, and you could totally buy that they had a long history and solid friendship. Say yes, that's all you gotta say. I'll take the job. I'll stop. Another notable co-star was Elizabeth Hurley. 
Passenger 57 was her Hollywood film debut. She of course would rise to fame several years later with her role as Vanessa Kensington in the Austin Powers movies. As far as the action goes, Wesley Snipes certainly delivers. The fight choreography is done really well and you could easily tell he has a background in martial arts, that he's not just some actor they trained for a couple of months. The camera pulled back far enough and we could see it's really him performing the scene, which he does flawlessly. He's really emphasizing the beauty of the strikes and technique. Which, as much as I like Sylvester Sloan and Arnold Schwarzenegger, especially as action stars, I feel if somebody legitimately knows and is trained in martial arts, it just gives them so much more to work with and it's just a lot cooler. And I actually prefer these moves. The hook kick, the front kick, the elbows. These can all legitimately be used while still looking cool. I feel like in a lot of films that utilize martial arts, especially more recent ones, particularly in the straight-to-video realm, they just try too hard with the so-called tricking and acrobatics. I'll take classic Van Damme any day. Or this from Wesley Snipes. There were no stunt doubles used for the final fight between him and Charles Rain. Wesley Snipes and Bruce Payne insisted on doing the scene themselves, despite the protests of the producers, but director Kevin Hooks insisted as well. Veteran stunt coordinator Glenn Wilder worked closely with Snipes and Payne to choreograph the dynamic fight scenes that both used and conformed to the enclosed space of the plane. Part of Passenger 57 was filmed in Central Florida, and Wesley Snipes spoke at his former Orlando High School, offering paid roles as extras to students with high grade point averages. It's a no it should be a normal thing where if you came from a place, you give respect to the people who got you through that. You know what I'm saying? Or you, you go back and you give a little bit of something to those who are coming up. Who are looking at you and everybody else at the school is telling them hey you know who went to school here such and such and such a person went to school here so you come back and you make yourself known you become a part of their lives you know i went to the school and i told them say hey when i come down to film these students those who are doing well those who improve them improve over the period of time from the last time i met them uh they'll get an opportunity to be in the movie they had a little fun during the movie with the scene where a passenger mistook wesley snipes for arsenio hall i watch his show all the time my show. Never miss it. Woo, woo, woo. And they would do the opposite thing a few years later in an episode of Martial Law where a character thought Arsenio Hall was Wesley Snipes. I just love doing Passenger 57. Passenger 57 was released on November 6, 1992 and opened at number one, making roughly $10.5 million the first weekend and the final U.S. tally of just over $44 million. It officially and successfully launched Wesley Snipes' career in the action genre. He would follow it up with other action hits such as Drop Zone, Money Train, and of course the Blade Trilogy of films. There's a few things I learned from Passenger 57. For example, in Roulette... Sally, you ever play Roulette? On occasion. Well, let me give you a word of advice. Always bet on black. That'll give you 46.37% odds. You're really not going to get better odds than that. Also, don't be so quick to point out whether or not you're in charge. Who's in charge? I am. Once again, who's in charge? You are. Excellent. And lastly, air travel was seemingly much nicer in the 90s. Look how great everyone was treated by the stewardess. Flight attendant. If you go back to your seat, I'll bring you your peanuts. And how much leg room there is. Air travel just seemed like a good experience. At least when the plane's not getting hijacked, of course. But nowadays, you're lucky to get a bag of peanuts while being crammed in like a sardine. To add insult to injury, you get charged extra for every little thing just so they can advertise the seat prices so low. It's quite deceiving. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about Passenger 57, and should Wesley Snipes be in the conversation as far as great martial arts movie stars go? Let me know in the comments below.